Come on. <laughs> Well, as a Last of Us fan, I am obviously a little more than just a bit excited for this. This is, a, this is huge. Uh, I know it came out a few days ago. I haven't really had time to post like a my thoughts, you know, analysis. You know, this is a big deal kind of video on this. But now I finally do. And it is a big deal. It's, uh, no jokes, because it is a huge deal. And anybody who's read the, the comics knows exactly, just immediately, exactly who that new character is. You know, there was a lot of speculation. You know, Naughty Dog hired a new actor for their mocap and, and voice, so who's the new character? Who's it going to be? Is it going to be Ish and Susan? Which, that would be pretty cool. I still think that would be a really cool idea. But is it going to be, you know, is it going to be, uh, what's his name, Bill and his friend, um, his lover, you know? You know, all these things, like, who, who could it be? And now, finally, we have confirmation. I kind of suspected that it was going to be, well, I'm not going to say the name yet, because before I do, I want to do a spoiler warning which is going to be now, spoiler warning, if you don't want to know anything at all about anything, specifically the comment, the comics, you know, because I'm going to be, the stuff I'm going to be talking about covers what happens in the comics, as well as how it corresponds with the game, which is a huge spoiler for both of them, so if you don't want to know anything, um, don't watch, and for everybody who does want to hear my thoughts on it, then keep watching, so let's get on with it. Uh, first off, well, gameplay-wise, I don't really think this DLC is going to be very fascinating in terms of, of combat. I mean, I think probably the most that we'll see is maybe some sneaking around and hand-to-hand -hand combat, because um, obviously Ellie doesn't know how to shoot a gun at this stage in her life. Uh, but if you follow the comics, then you do know that she does have her Switchblade at this stage, so, um, you know, I mean, that's, that's pretty much as far as I think it'll go. Maybe we'll be able to play as Riley and switch stuff up a, st switch stuff up a bit, and that might be interesting, but... Uh, when it comes to gameplay, I'm really not expecting too much in terms of like, wow, you know, but uh, in terms of story in this new character, let's get on with that. Would you play this before? No. But I had a friend that knew everything about this game. Riley is a super cool character. I remember really liking her in the comics. Now, in the video game itself, it, it, it's not very in-depth. Like, you, you get little bits and pieces of who Riley was, but you really don't know at all who Riley was. And, you know, all you know is whoever this Riley person was, Ellie really cared for her, which is kind of a no-brainer. I mean, if you have a friend in this, this world of The Last of Us, it's a world of just absolute shit. I mean, everything's gone to hell. It's every man for himself. You don't know who you can trust. You know, you don't know who's going to just turn their back on you when things get to their absolute worst moments. It's a horrible thing. So they were friends. It didn't have to be any more than that or any less. It didn't have to be bad friends or good friends or really good friends. They just had to be friends, and that was enough in this world. And it shows throughout The Last of Us that Ellie did care for her. I mean, she only comes up a few times in the game, but every time she does come up, for instance, there's a, a, a section of the winter chapter that you can check Ellie's backpack, and when you're looking through her belongings, these items that, they're, they're just small items, but Ellie murmurs to herself as she looks at them, and she, she murmurs some, some pretty emotional, pretty dark stuff about them that, you know, obviously she's containing all these emotions within, and, and obviously these, these items mean a lot to her and she can't part ways with them. One of those items being a firefly emblem with the name Riley on it. I miss you. Now, when it comes to the correlation of the story in the comics and the story in the game itself, it's so brilliantly done. I mean, there are things that you stumble upon in the game and discussions that you'll hear in the game that if you read the comics, you'll be like, whoa, I remember that. Yeah, that's, that's cool. And so, you know, if you didn't read the comics, it would just be another thing or another discussion. Now, there were two, I don't want to say plot holes, but there were two just holes in the story that we were expecting the comics to explain, but instead they didn't explain them, you know, and the first one being how exactly did Ellie get infected? I mean, we know the general story. She was in the mall with Riley and that was that, you know, but we were expecting the comics to expand on that. Like what exactly happened? I mean, for me, I was expecting the comics to explain how she met Riley and, you know, the story of what happened in between you know, meeting Riley and, you know, Riley meeting her end and Ellie realizing that she was immune. That was what I was expecting, but it turns out the comics were just kind of a story. It was all about just meeting Riley, you know, and the second kind of hole in the story that we were expecting the comics to fill up was, um, or well, actually that the comics kind of raised was how exactly did, or how and when did exactly did Riley become a Firefly? I mean, we know she was one based on the Firefly pendant, and we know that all throughout the comics she wanted to be a Firefly. That was the whole reason that she went outside, that she coaxed Ellie to go outside with her and out of bounds. She wanted to meet up with the Fireflies, meet up with Winston, you know, and, you know, that old guy that taught Ellie to ride a horse, you know. 
It's another one of those things. How where did you learn to ride a horse? And Ellie's like, don't ask me. You didn't read my comics, did you? But in issue number four, Riley doesn't become a Firefly. In fact, Marlene even threatens to kill her, saying that, you know, it would be your same fate if you did join us. So obviously she was looking out for Riley's best interest and didn't want her to become a Firefly. But the point is she didn't become one. That didn't, it didn't happen in the comics. So we have two things here. We have two things that the comics did not explain, which is... How did Ellie get infected, and when did Riley become a Firefly? So those are two events that happen before the story in The Last of Us, and two events that happen after the events in the comic. And thus, drumroll please, our mighty DLC. Oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> Guys, there is so much potential here. I mean, I think about the way The Last of Us made me feel when I first played it. I mean, the, the emotion, the, the character development, the relationship between Joel and Ellie, the connection that I had, the fact that at times I would fear for a video game character's life. I mean, I didn't know it was possible. I mean, The Last of Us is single-handedly easy, the best story I've ever experienced in gaming. You know, Naughty Dog made it possible, and now we get more. And not only is it more, but it's Ellie, who we've all grown to love. And it's not just, it's not the Ellie that we know. That's the important thing. It's a much more innocent Ellie. You know, it's it's an Ellie that really has been sheltered from the horrors of the horrible world outside the quarantine zone. I mean, the quarantine zone has its fair share of horrors, but by the end of the original single player, she was pretty hard and she knew, she, she saw, you know, what the world could be. And so this is before all that. Her attitude, her everything is going to be very different from what, you know, we got used to in the initial game, so. As much as I would have liked an Ish DLC or, you know, a Bill DLC or whoever, you know, at this point, I couldn't think of anything else. Like, this is this is all it could be <laughs> to me. The only thing that could rival this is maybe a Joel and Tommy DLC, because we know from their discussion at the dam that Joel and Tommy have some very dark history uh, after the out initial outbreak, and so it'd be very interesting to see that. I think that would be probably equally as emotional and hard to watch. But anyways, as always, this is my analysis slash uh, first thoughts and heart and soul about the new DLC coming up. I cannot wait. It's 14 US dollars, the last I checked, and hopefully it is a very long, very, um, very worth it DLC to experience. I mean, we know Naughty Dog nailed it with the initial story, uh, regardless of the debatable ending, and I really hope that they nail it with this DLC, because this could just be absolutely amazing. Last time I was this excited was when The Last of Us first came out, a little bit before June 14th, when I was just like, oh, I can't wait, and... You know, this is about it. It sucks we gotta wait till May, what is it, in May 2014? That's quite a while to wait. You know, I, I also worry about the the, the player pool of the multiplayer. <laughs> you know, because we know that there's only going to be three DLC drops. One of them is going to be... Well, we already, we already had the first one, then the second one's going to be story. The third one's going to be multiplayer. So, I mean, multiplayer DLC coming after May 2014 sounds like a very long time. Hopefully there's still people playing. <laughs> Only time will tell, but anyway, thank you so much for watching, everyone. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. Hope you agree. If you don't, let me know. I'd love to have a, I'd love to have a further discussion on this whole thing. So uh, I will see you in the next video.